Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. In this video, I will be discussing the interview experience of Mindtree. Now, this is second experience which I am, will be discussing in this video. The first experience video of Mindtree has already been uploaded on my channel. So, just make sure that after watching this video, you watch that video also. Guys, in this video, I will be discussing the questions which are asked in both TR round as well as the HR round. So, guys, remember one thing that TR round is separate and HR round is separate. So, I will be discussing both the questions which are asked in this round. Guys, if you are new to this channel, make sure that you subscribe it as well as join my Telegram group also. I post regular updates on different companies which are hiring as well as the questions which are getting asked in them. So guys, now let's start this video and before starting the video, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel. Okay, so the date of the interview of my friend was 28th March 2021. His branch was CS. Yesterday I posted a video in which my friend's branch was IT. So make sure that you watch that video also. Now the time of its his TR interview was 40 minutes. Now first I will be discussing the technical round questions. Then I will be coming to the HR round questions. Okay. So the first question is introduce yourself. So guys, this is again I have told you in yesterday's video also that this is the most important and the most common question which is asked in an interview. This question will decide that in which direction your interview will go. So make sure that you highlight most of the skills that you are comfortable in in this introduce yourself so that the questions can be put up from this section. Now my friend told about the technologies and the certification he did. So he did certain data structure certification. So he showed showed the interviewer that. Okay. So after this, the next question was, what is a binary search tree? Now this question was is from D DS subject. Now more common subjects that are asked in interview are the DS. Then there are OOPs. Then there is DBMS and the questions related to the projects. Now the question here is, what is binary search tree? Now, binary search tree is a tree data structure in which the left node's value is less than the root node and the right node's value is greater than the root node. Okay, so for your reference, this is the image. So this is a binary search tree and how we can find out that this is a binary search tree or not. See, we will take a one node that is, let's suppose this is eight. Now we will see at its left. So left is three. So it means that the left node should have the value less than the root node and the right node should have value greater than the root node. So here three is less than eight and it belongs to left and 10 is greater than eight and it is right. So this thing should follow for the every node that is present inside this tree. So if it is for, if this condition is fulfilled, then it means that the tree is a binary search tree. Okay. So I hope you understood this question and it is, this is again a very good question that can be asked in an interview. Now, now again, the next question was again based on this tree only. Now my friend was told to explain what is pre-order, what is in order and post order traversals. So you you guys knew, know that these are all the traversals by which we can traverse our tree. Okay. So first of all is a pre-order. So what is a pre-order? So again, pre-order means pre means that our parent node, that is this node, this node will be considered first, then our left node will be considered and then our right side will be considered for the traversal purpose. So this is what a pre-order traversal is. Now, next one is in order. So as you can see it from name only that in order, in order refers to the here in here pre and here post, it refers to the parent object. So in, in order, what we'll do, we'll first traverse the left side of the tree. Then we will traverse the parent of the tree. Then we'll traverse the right side of the tree. So this is what in order is. So in mean in between. So parent will come in between of left and right. Now the next thing, next was post order. Again, you know that post means after. So what will happen? First of all, the left side of the tree will be traversed. Then the right side of the tree will be traversed. And then at the last, the middle, that is the parent of the tree will be traversed. So these are all the traversals which were asked to him. If you want to know these things in detail, I will give you the link in the description box. So you can see there. Okay. So after this, the next question was to write a pseudo code for a Fibonacci series. So as many of you asked me question that in a virtual mode, how it is possible to write a pseudo code. Okay. So interviewer can ask you to either share your screen and just write the pseudo code, or he can ask you to explain the logic behind the code he will be giving. So he might not ask you to write the code, but he can ask you to explain him the logic behind the code. So you must be prepared for that also. Now he was, uh, my friend was asked the write the pseudo code for Fibonacci series. So all of you know that Fibonacci series is Fibonacci series is a very basic thing. So let me just first of all, draw it. Okay. 
सो फर्स्ट एलिमेंट विल बी जीरो देन वन एंड द थर्ड एलिमेंट विल बी द सम ऑफ प्रीवियस टू एलिमेंट दट इज जीरो प्लस वन विल बी वन तो नाउ द नेक्स्ट एलिमेंट विल बी द सम ऑफ प्रीवियस टू नंबर दट इज वन प्लस वन टू सो दिस इज हाउ ऑफ इवन आकी इज फॉर्म नेक्स्ट नंबर विल बी थ्री एंड सो ऑन सो द करंट नंबर इज द सम ऑफ द प्रीवियस टू नंबर so i hope you got what is a fibonacci series is so he was asked to write a pseudo code for the same so this is the pseudo code for your reference you can pause the video and take the screenshot for the same okay so after this question he was asked he was uh, he was taken to the oops concepts so he was asked explain different access modifiers in class so you know that there are typical three modifiers which are present in a class either they are private either they are public or they are protected so what are private modifiers see in this type of members which are declared as private it can't be accessed outside the class directly by the object they can only be accessed by the methods declared inside the class okay so you, you know the concepts of class so there are data members and there are there are methods also so those things which are declared as private they can't directly be accessed outside the class using the objects but they can be accessed inside the class by the methods of that class so this is what a private access modifier is now next is public so public is opposite of private only so private cannot be accessed outside the class but public data members or the data functions can directly be accessed outside the class using the object okay so this is what a public is now again the third type is protected so see protected is similar to private that it can't be accessed directly outside the class but in protected what happens when a class is when an inheritance is performed then then they can be accessed by the other class methods also so this is what a protected is so i hope you understood the difference between these three and then you have to explain it to the interviewer in giving by giving the examples okay so the next question is again it is based on oops concept only what is the difference between function overloading and function overriding okay so function overloading in this there are there are more than one function with same name inside the class they are differentiated by each other by the number of parameters in them or by the type of parameters in them okay so what is function overloading it means that let's suppose there is a class and it contains three functions or three methods you can say so all the methods name will be same so let's suppose all the method name will be code bashers so how will it differentiate it so how the compiler will differentiate it so it will only differentiate it on the basis of the parameters on of that functions so there are three code bashers function so first first can contain three arguments second one can contain two arguments and third one can again contain three arguments but the type of the arguments are different so so this is how this is what a function overloading is it contains more than one function with same name but different types of parameters so this is a function overloading and the next was function overriding so function overriding is a feature that allows a child class to provide a specific implementation of a method that is already provided by one of its parent class okay so function overriding takes place when we do inheritance so let's suppose in the parent class there is one function name let's suppose there is one function name print and again when we do inheritance then this print function will again come in the child class but again if we give the definition of child of the print function in the child class then the uh, print function of the child class will get executed so this is what the function overriding is again if you want to learn it in detail i will give you the link in the description box so that you can study about the difference between these two okay so the next question is now the next question was based on dbms the next question was explain the constraints in sql so there are four major constraints in sql first is the not null constraint that is the value inside a particular column cannot be null it has to be any value it can be either negative or positive but it has to be a value it can't be null the second one is the unique constraint that is all the values which are present inside the column should be unique like there can cannot be two ones or two twos there should be one two three four or certain different numbers which are unique from each other now third one is the default value constraint so now what is the default value constraint see if you forget to give a value inside a column so default value constraint what it will do it will simply by default put a value in it so let's suppose you forgot to give the age of the person so by, by default age will be put as 18 if you mentioned by what value it should get replaced so 18 will be by default put at that particular column now the next is the primary key constraint now one more constraint is there that is the foreign key constraint so these are again two 
मेजर टाइप्स ऑफ कंस्टेंट विच कैन बी आस्ट वन इज द प्राइमरी की एंड द फॉरन की यू मस्ट नो द डिफरेंस बिटवीन दीज टू सो आई होप द कंस्टेंट इन एस क्यूल इज क्लियर टू यू दिस इज अगेन द क्वेश्चन विच वॉज आस्ट फ्रॉम माई फ्रेंड नाउ द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज एक्सप्लेन अबाउट योर प्रोजेक्ट सो गाइज सी आई एम बीन टेलिंग यू दैट थ्री सब्जेक्ट्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट एंड द प्रोजेक्ट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट सो सब्जेक्ट्स आर डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स बेसिक्स ऑफ डेटा स्ट्रक्चर्स ऊप्स कंसेप्ट्स एंड द डीबीएमएस कंसेप्ट्स सो दीज आर द थ्री बेसिक सब्जेक्ट्स एंड द फोर्थ थिंग दैट इज दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इन एन इंटरव्यू इज योर प्रोजेक्ट सो यू मस्ट नो द एंटायर डिटेल्स ऑफ योर प्रोजेक्ट दैट ऑन विच टेक्नोलॉजी यू वर्कड ऑन इट हाउ यू डिड दैट प्रोजेक्ट वट ऑल दी वट आर द चैलेंजेस यू फेस एंड how you overcome those challenges so you must know every detail of your project you can either put two projects only in your in your resume but you can you should put those project only which you can explain thoroughly so again this is a very common question in an interview that explain about your project now the next question is explain about the research paper you have mentioned in resume so many of you have mentioned certain achievements in a resume so my friend has mentioned the research paper that he has published so he was asked about that that explain the research paper but if you have put any other achievement the questions can be put up to you on the basis of that you should be well prepared all the with all the things you have mentioned in resume you should not lie in resume and you should be honest in an interview if you want to crack it so these are all the questions which were asked in a technical round from my friend so this round lasted around 40 minutes now this was the first round and if you clear the tr round then you go to the hr round so my friend gave all the answers correctly in this round and he was then promoted to the hr round now the hr round is only of 5 to 10 minutes you can say and there are very ba basic questions which are asked in that round so first was tell me about yourself so again this can be again asked that it was already asked in tr round but it can be again asked in hr round so you should be prepared for it now the second question the hr asked was are you ready to relocate so it is only it is depend this answer depends on you only whether you are comfortable in different locations or not now the next question was are you willing to work in different shifts or not so for this if you are not willing to work in different shifts you should answer yes only they will not put you in any odd shift but you should answer yes only for this particular question now the next question was what are your weaknesses so guys one more thing is that you might have mentioned the strengths and weaknesses in your resume so you should have a real life real life experience on those strengths and weaknesses that how you know that this is your strength and how you know that this is your weakness so again you should give a real life examples while giving the while answering such questions so guys this was all the questions which are asked in hr round so we have discussed the tr round experience as well as the hr round experience so this was it for this video i hope you liked the video if you want more such videos please comment down so that i can make more So yes thank you for watching it